Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today is part two of a two-part series on how to be more of who you already are. Now, in part one, we talked about reinventing yourself, uh, creating new identities as a way of trying to create a new us. But today we're going to look at what it is to go from creating a new identity to uncovering our true identity. There's an old story about Michelangelo that someone asked him how it was that he was able to create such beautiful angels out of stone. And he said, I, I don't really do that. I see the angel trapped inside the stone and I use my chisel to set it free. And that points us towards how we would get at our true identity. The first part is to see that it's there. And then the second is to chip away at anything that isn't it. So whereas reinventing yourself and creating new identities is a doing, getting to the angel inside, what I called in part one, the diamond inside, is an undoing. So there are essentially two ways of undoing yourself. And one of the most popular is inquiry. And one of the most popular forms of inquiry at the moment is Byron Katie's The Work. And essentially, you write down any troubling idea that you have about the world or about yourself, and by asking some simple questions, you undo that idea, you undo that belief. You don't replace it with a new, better belief. You simply unravel, like pulling on a thread, the, the sweater of beliefs that you're already wearing, the costume that you're already wearing. And in fact, the question, one of the questions in, in the work is, who would you be without that thought? Who would you be without that idea? Who would you be without that story? And the idea behind it is that it is continually pointing you back to who you already are before the story, before thought, before creation. In Zen, one of the Zen koans is, show me your original face, the face you had before you were born. And that's another way of pointing towards who we are before we create ourselves or recreate ourselves. Now, the unraveling behind the work can be a, a, a really powerful, freeing experience. But there's a trap in it. And, and I first saw it when one of my clients who had been doing the work, I think I'm the one who introduced him to the work, came to me with two full, giant, full-size notebooks filled with all of the beliefs about himself and life that he had uncovered that he was going to do the work on. And I looked at it and I just went, huh. If we know going in that the end result of looking at each one of these ideas, thoughts, stories, and beliefs is that we're going to see through it. We're going to see it for what it is, an idea, thought, story, or belief What's the advantage of actually going in and doing the work? What happens if we just sit in the question, who would I be without these stories? Who would I be without these thoughts? Who would I be without this belief? Now for me, staying with that question takes me towards the, the space of meditation that state of inner quiet and stillness that people go through all sorts of meditative techniques and practices to try to get to. And meditation, interestingly, has been known for thousands of years as the great undoing. Now, here's an analogy to kind of highlight the difference between the kind of undoing that we can do through inquiry and the kind of undoing brought about by living in a state of meditation. Imagine your persona, your false self, 
the block of marble that the angel is trapped inside of as being like an iceberg. So instead of made of stone, it's made of ice. Now we can use our chisel, use our techniques, use something like the work or a similar sort of inquiry to chisel away at that iceberg. And sure enough, if we keep at it, if we are willing to do the work, if we work hard, we will have breakthroughs. We will have insights. We will see that iceberg get smaller. But there's another way. If we simply take that iceberg and stick it under the sun, day in and day out, it will begin to melt. Now, sometimes that melting won't be visible for a time, and then chunks of ice will fall away. Or we may not even notice ice fall away because it's just gently going back into the water out of which it is made. And that's, in a way, the simplest way I know to get back to who and what we already are who and what we really are, is to simply rest in the quiet of mind, in the quiet of meditation, in the peace that we are, in the stillness that we are. Instead of doing, we allow an undoing. And the more you spend time in that state, whether it's through an understanding of the principles that I talk about in these audios, or through some kind of a practice of meditation. The more time we spend in the sun, the more the ice melts. We don't get to decide which bits melt when, but the dissolution of the iceberg, the return of the false self into the ocean of the true self, the dissolution of the form back into the formless of the personality, the new identity back into our true identity is inevitable. And the deeper and more beautiful our experience of life becomes. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon. <laughs>